Genesis chapter 2 verse 10 very quickly. I welcome all of us to an Akazo. Promises to be an encounter of a lifetime. An Akazo is projected. Let's read together. Please don't get distracted. Just focus. Focus on the screens. One, two, go. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Tell somebody by your side a river. As at this level, there was no need to give a nomenclature to the river. It has no name. The only thing known about it was a river. And the location it came out from was from Eden. And there is a difference between Eden and the Garden of Eden. Eden is the name of the location. It is like saying Habikut Hall of television. Television is the area. The hall is a particular location inside the area. The Garden of Eden was inside Eden. So they named it Garden. A river went out of Eden to water the meeting place between God and man. And scripture said something that at the cool of the evening, the walking voice of God comes into the garden to discuss and dialogue with man. And the location where God comes to every cool of the day is the garden. But there is a river that came from a source that no man can discern. And when it entered the garden, its one work is to water the meeting place between God and man. You see, the New Testament typology of the garden is your body. The human body is the meeting place between spirits and men. So the contact place that God will meet a man is inside this body, but it will, it will happen in a meeting that is inside his spirit. And the body is what hosts the spirit. Just as the garden hosts Adam, the body is the host for every spirit. Without a body, a spirit has no legal ground to operate in the realms. And so the garden itself needed watering. And the water was coming from somewhere. In Ezekiel chapter 47, you will hear scripture talk about the water that began to flow from the base of the altar. It was just flowing gradually. And before you know it, the angel was measuring 1,000 cubits. It was by his ankle, another 1,000 cubits by his knee, by his loins. And it grew until it became a large river. I'm sharing something. Pay attention. The altar of God moved from the temple in the old covenant from a secret place in the holy of holies and it shifted in the new covenant into the heart of a man that's where god's altar now is the definition of temple in the lexicon of zion was updated when jesus accomplished his purposes so they no longer call a temple a house built with bricks and clay a temple is now called the body of men so scripture says know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost and so since we now know what temple is where is the altar in this new temple? The heart of a man. And that is where they said that water was flowing from the base. <sighs> Give me verse 11 of that scripture, Genesis chapter 2. Let's continue from verse 10, then we'll go to 11 together quickly. Everybody, let's read very loud as we can. One, two, go, please. A river went out of Eden to water the garden. From the things I've shared, you can, you can look at what we are trying to apply here. And from thence, when it has accomplished what he wanted to do to the garden. And what is the garden in this, in this analogy, please? Come on, I want to know that we are following me. The, the, the garden is where? The body. The river entered the body to water it. But the location where it came from, they say Eden. It came to do a purpose in the garden to water it. Mind you, the purpose of Adam in the garden was to dress and to keep it. And the river came to support Adam because you cannot keep a garden that does not have water source. And the river was to partner with the assignment of Adam to dress and to keep. The river came to water the garden. 
and these rivers we have diagnosed that it comes from the base of an altar and if an altar is not active nothing flows from there mind you i said the river is for the garden and i said the garden is the body of man and now we are reading that and from thence once the river has accomplished its purpose once it has watered the garden it will give a description to that body that has no name all along from thence it parted into four heads somebody say four heads a once nameless river a river without an identity verse 11 says let's read together one two go the name of the first is what peace on which compassed the whole land of what where there is what tell somebody gold what is gold is economic power resources the first assignment of the river is to unveil something in that land that has value and gold signifies economic power it signifies the power of commerce it signifies wealth and financial freedom and that the assignment of this river when he enters you and water you when he wants to branch out its first branch is to reveal gold in your land that the first assignment of the river Pison, when it branches out, remember, one river will go and water you, but it will not remain one when it's about to branch out from you. If it's coming out from thence, he say it became four heads. The first river that was named was Pison, and that this one compassed the whole land. It was a land, but the river has the ability to reveal what was in the land. He says inside that land, there is gold. labor without the river and find how 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 fruitful your effort is it was the assignment of a river to expose you to your wealth it that's why they call it in isaiah chapter 45 verse 2 and 3 he says behold i go before thee i will make the crooked places straight i will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron and akazo listen to me he says i will give you the treasures of darkness treasures but they were hidden in darkness and the hidden riches of secret places it is the assignment of a river to bring that which is beneath to the surface only a river can bring you to your awareness of who you truly are scripture says there is this treasure in 18 vessels so that the excellency of the power may be of the lord not of man there is treasure but it is hidden Let's continue my scripture quickly. River flow, river flow. Let it turn our river flow. In my life once again. Let it turn it When the ancients stepped into time, they were reminding men of a river. Even Jesus was telling the sons of men, who is it that tests? The solution is a river. Come. Ah, Jesus. Who knows they are going to be blessed tonight? Today we are going to pray. It's just a short charge I want to give. We will pray until like a dam. The cocoon of the flesh that contains that river will be cracked. If the river flows out, Jesus, one of the first stream that will come out is to come and show you where gold is in your destiny. There is a river who has that assignment. It is his purpose to go and expose to you the area of your value. You can be doing try and error in destiny and not even know where your strength is. The responsibility of discovering your true potential is the work of a river. And until that river breaks forth. <sighs> Let's continue reading quickly. One, two, go. The name of the first is Pison. That which compassed the whole land of Havila where there is gold continue quickly and the gold thumps. let's read together now and the gold of that land is good wait i want to show you some indices there is only the wealth that comes from god that they call good success and now they are telling you there is a gold that is good gold they want you to know that this is not just resources by human activity it is a resources that was orchestrated by a divine finger and that this one is a good gold they use good to associate God to it because Jesus says no man is good, only God. So if you want to know when God is in a thing, they will add good to the thing. Then you will know that this is a way to qualify that God is associated with this thing. They came to him and said, good master. And he says, why do you call me good? 
good good somebody say god good <laughs> see by the definition of good we just did now your boyfriend that you are calling good you can see that he's not good in all honesty forget it no man is good everybody is selfish everybody is self-centered it takes the holy spirit to help a man as far as you are in the earth you are you will not find any good man oh you, you are still convinced that he's good <laughs> he's not good if you have seen anything good in him he's the lord's doing and the day he stopped depending on god your eye will clear Let's continue quickly. There is, see, it's not only gold that is there. See the precious stones associated with it. Ah, let me share something. Please, I need our attention. If there is any major river in any city and the volume of the river increases, it is only Christians that moves as though nothing is happening. All enchanters and diviners they will wait for the time a full moon will come while the volume, physically science call it flooding but the waters were given their habitation by God in Psalms he says they have their habitation and he gave them a strict instruction that they should not exceed it if you find nature rebelling against the instruction of God it's a report card they are speaking to men who have eyes that hear the language of the spirit that the the balances in that society has been tilted injustice has reigned so even nature has gone beyond its boundary that going beyond its boundaries to show you that the foundations are out of course and you are seeing this sign to use to know that wickedness has prevailed so it will be a time where the witches who could not strike a man for many years they will be unusually powerful it will be in that kind of night it won't be a time to go to bed anyhow now, am I telling you to start observing times and, and, and moons and all that? No. You will know. You will know the nights where there are heightened spiritual activities. You see, the way a man fasts and pray and then feels energized and then there are energies in him. Then he moves on the strength of that energy. That is how many luminaries in darkness do. They don't move until they know that the time is right. And when they feel that all the factors are split for their advantage, they move. Unfortunately, it's a very, very sweet night to sleep for an average man. The Hamatan seasons were entering. You will find out that unfortunately it falls in the Imba period. And that Imba period is when many people meet an untimely end. The shadow of death is casted over families. While death casts its shadow, it has not visited yet. But you can, people who have eyes and ears in that family, they are already seeing dreams of obituaries. Seeing dreams that somebody died. What you are relating with is the shadow of death. He has not come yet but the spirit realm is showing you that something the way i can be walking and my shadow is ahead of me before death arrives his shadow will interact with men and men will pick it and say somebody is coming what you are knowing by that is that your eye began to see things it will be a good time to call the family to attention quickly call the one who is very careless and say let's pray let's raise and when you want to fight that spirit it's a principal spirit you don't have the power to go on death one on one so you must hide inside the blood. Only the blood turns death away. I'm giving you these tools because the Imba period is where we have entered. When you sense the arrow of death, don't declare fasting. Don't go and think you want to. You cannot by yourself overpower it. It is a spirit that held the ancient saints at ransom. Even at Hades, the Bible says the last enemy to be conquered is death. And so even by the death of Jesus, the declaration is all thy power, right? Oh, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy power? It is death. That's to show you how powerful this principality is. And so if you want to conquer death, you will use death to conquer death. You will come to death bearing an ID card that I have died. And the ID card is the blood of Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Scripture says it is appointed. It is appointed unto man only once to die. And so since men must die once, if you come holding blood, death cannot say where did you get it from you are bringing an evidence that i have met the requirement that i can die once and this is the proof that i have died it is why this thing was done it is for one reason so that men can have power over some of the strongest cases in darkness 
the wages of sin is death by the verdict of justice if you sin death should visit you but this is why jesus must die somebody say why didn't god just stay in heaven and say i have forgiven everybody it is because of the things we are presenting blood must speak and so if jesus dies what will happen is that on many occasions there are many of us who don't realize exactly why the death must happen why he must shed blood on the cross and why that blood must be presented to the altar in heaven Mary Magdalene approached Jesus she wanted to touch him and he says don't touch me I have not presented myself to the father he went to present his blood and his testament to the courts of heaven for one particular reason because sin did not start from men sin started from angels so even them too they were waiting and hoping for salvation the spirit realm needed Jesus more than us it was there that rebellion started from it is the one who fell in the spirit realm that came to deceive the one that they created in the physical so it was not man that first sinned angels first sinned and so angels too were waiting for the lamp to prevail it was in the realm of the spirit that there was silence because of frustration. They didn't know what else to do because they had been compromised. And then when an elder looked upon the lamb, when he prevailed, the Bible says he tapped John the beloved. He says, weep not, behold the lion. He presents himself to them there as lion. But to us, he comes as a lamb. When he comes to them, everybody stands because a lion is entering his kingdom. But with men, he presents himself as a lamb. This is why between these two different civilizations we don't relate with him the same way with us he calls us he says what greater love can a man have than to lay his life down for his friend Jesus calls you his friend yet no angel can call Jesus a friend when they looked at him it was a lion and the apostle says behold when I turned to look lo and behold I saw a lamb and even there, he made sure that my relationship with you on earth will not change. No matter what you see me doing with this angel, it's between me and them. Me and you will still continue to relate as a lamb. Any day you need me, I will still be the object of sacrifice. There's somebody that needs the things I'm sharing right now. I have seen from time and time again that the teachings that we continue to give by the leading of the spirit it is a building block for many people you don't know how many people needed this truth they carry it and go back to the world they almost lost and say where is that devil again I have found the key out of death you can stay in that sick bed and the doctors can tell you anything death is a spirit men don't die until the spirit win you carry the blood and say the blood of Jesus has paid the price you will find out that even malaria can be found in your blood yet you are not sick but why will you treat a man who is not sick have you not read he says they will take up deadly things and it shall not hurt them the things were deadly you will still know that it's poison it will not change but yet over your body it will have no power the bible says these signs will follow them that believe do you believe many of you you don't know the testimonies happening in your life yet just because you had that pain and then you said the blood or in the name and then you the pain vanished you come up very casually and say there was one pain he left go and ask those who went to do x-ray when they felt pain and they told them it's an organ failure you satan strikes and you revenge immediately and there was nothing left to you <laughs> you don't know you don't know what happens it's only in the spirit realm only in the spirit realm that you can truly tell how sicknesses are exchanged how men also stood up by faith but physically you will think maybe it's not a serious thing that's why i recovered don't ever trivialize the workings of god in your life that headache you are celebrating today one day you will be in an accident the car will some assault and the same god who solved headache will carry you out like this That's why when they were singing hallelujah, my soul registered that this worship is accepted. There was something that was sucking everybody. Sing it one more time. It's almost as though God was saying, say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
seen different lands, large expanse of land like fields. And I see it like a place where a war, a war was fought. I can still see, you know, dead bodies of many military men on the floor with ancient armories, spears and swords. But I cannot see names for them. I'm seeing dates. I'm seeing dates. I'm seeing dates. I'm seeing 19, 1952. And I hear the Spirit say that it is different ages that contended for the flag of King Jesus. Those fields are different generations that fought their fight. And there is a field for our time. And all the men who must arise, all the men who must lift their sword, change your plowshares to sword quickly. The war has started. Those who defend the integrity of Jesus in our generation, the demand for you has come. There is no other time again. It is this time. It is now that they need you. There will be many of your brethren who are already tired in the field because their numbers are few. There are many people who are waiting for those who will come and support their hand. There are many people who are waiting for those who will bring water to quench their thirst in the field while they remain fighting for the flag. And they are fighting for the integrity of a generation. It is for their sake that our children will not be thrown into outer darkness. It is them that are making sure that godly content are still in the airways. So when darkness pump iniquity, they pump righteousness too. And there is a war happening in the air. There are those who will fight in the space. And some people will fight in the land. Those who will fight in the space, God is preparing you special. Your own preparation is different from those who will fight on the land. You will delay. God will keep you in a season because you must grow wings before you fly. You are going to levitate into the air very soon and your ministry will be crowned with visibility. Nations will see you, but you are there to fight. The reason why nations will look at you it is because you are supposed to fight. Your weapon, your weapon is fire. It's not spear and it's not sword. From your mouth you will speak. And territories will come under fire. There are people I see treating wounded soldiers. I see them treating wounded soldiers. Those who are wounded and they want to give up. There is a strange ministry I see. They come and hold them and raise them up. Raise them up by power. Lord, where are they? Where are your luminaries? By the hand of the Spirit and by the authority of the Word, I declare over this place, Lord, subscribe them by your power. know where you are if you know where you are it's not the time to look around it's just you and God just you and him I'm seeing somebody trying to lift a shield that is too heavy for him. The shield is too heavy and he is trying to lift it at all costs. 
I declare capacity for you right now. Strength in the spirit to lift whatever mantle, whatever grace, whatever ability, whatever anointing. Oh, some people need staying power, prayer power. Some people need the ability to fast. Those graces are supplied by the power of Jesus. Take it in the name of Jesus. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Over Kaduna State. There's an army rising up. The old will break every chance. Lastly, before we sit, please never get, never get used to these processions in the spirit. Never get used to it because these are very ascetic moments in the spirit. Your nature can change suddenly. He maketh his angels wings and anybody who would minister before him, he turns them into flames of fire. Once upon a time you are dust, but you will not remain dust forever. You will encounter a burning bush that will change you into what you are beholding. What Holy Ghost is doing, oh Jesus, He is just moving by His discretion, touching people that are desperate. upon the shoulders of young men and young women I see them planting the flag in their generation I see King Jesus winning oh hey amen please if you can gather yourself sit down briefly Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 quickly hmm. Oh There's gonna be a great awakening There's gonna be a great Revival in our lands There's gonna be a great outpouring And everyone Who calls on Jesus They will be saved Your lips have sunk it Your legs will bring it to pass your hands will fight that war. One day, our children will see visions too. And they will see a field with a date upon it. And they will see some of your faces as the generals that fought that war. You know the people who fought before you rose. It was Kumui. It was Oyedepo. God 
God rose them and used their life, spent their youth, and you were the product of that labor. Their life was wasted on one field. I would waste upon your altar. I would waste following you. At the end, that's all the world would say of me. Ha, Jesus, Jesus. There's so many things to follow, but I live for loving you. In life or in death, I am yours. Lord, I would waste upon your altar. I would waste following you. At the end, that's all my word would say of me. There's so many things to follow, but I need following you in life. The cry is one. This is an akazo. It's a mountain of ordination. This is why anything God gives us to teach, you see it always come back to men finding their path again in the spirit. The lost path, the ancient foundations, ancient paths and mantles. It is on this mountain that men call their own and say, where is my tribe, oh God? What language do I speak in the spirit? Where are those who walk this path before me? But I live following you in life or in death, I am yours. Oh, that we have men like Daniel again, men who was taken captive, and God did not show up and defend you at that age, and they took you and circumcised you. You became an eunuch. You will never have a child in your life, yet you never cry to God and say, is this how I will die? Even when the captivity was over, he never cried and said, carry me. He said, my place is here. I know my place of primary assignment. My place is here. Where are those who will die on the field? You already know how your life will end because Jesus told you, you, you are going to suffer for me. I chose you to suffer. That was the call of Apostle Paul. Where are the people who are called to suffer again? Everybody says God sent me to be a voice to change the economic power. Where are those who receive a badge of suffering? My call is to suffer. To suffer for the king. To bear the mark of suffering. Oh God of breakthroughs, God of this, God of that. Where are the men that fight for the flag of Jesus? Where are those who don't understand what is happening to their life, but they have vowed that they will never turn their back to Jesus? Where are those that men are mocking them currently? People are calling them a failure, yet the immortals make obeisance to them. Your kinds are few, your types are very scarce. It was few of you that brought the gospel to us because if everybody live like the people who are looking for pleasures, the gospel has not ever prospered in pleasure. It has been carried on the back of sacrifice, the back of pain. You know where they pick soldiers from? You know where they select them from? They don't select soldiers in a season of abundance. They pick soldiers in suffering. The training of a soldier is not the training of a civilian. A soldier is put through rigorous activity. You don't know why God is doing your life like that. You are one of those that has been marked. Marked to fight for a flag. At the end of our age, 
the immortals will tell your stories they will sing your fame to another generation many of you in the new jerusalem your name will be written on one of the gates this be the man that turned the world upside down i don't care what the world is calling you right now the world don't know you koda dunia takibi na so nzoma kamanka ha Koda dunia takibi na so nzoma kamanka ha if you can't be seated Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 Kai this prophecy is coming to pass in people's lives so distant lands and islands they will see his light at his rise upon you If you can see it projected, can we read it loud and akazu? One, two, go. Ye are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on an hill that cannot be hid. Tell somebody I'm a city. Come on, say it convincingly. I'm a city. Say it again. I'm a city. Psalm 46 verse 4, very quickly. Let me show you something. And Akazo, you may laugh if you see what I'm about to show you. Take, take one minute at the count of three. Let's read this very loud. One, two, go. There is a river. The streams of that river shall make glad the city of God. Wait, who is the city of God? Come on, come on. I just showed you from my previous scripture. Who is the city of God? You are the city that they say cannot be hidden, right? Can we talk? Anakazo, who is the city of God? From that knowledge that you are the city. They say there is a river that was designed to bring gladness. It is not the river that will bring the gladness. It is the stream, the branches of the river. Can we read together? There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. If you want to be happy, fulfilled, you want to live a fulfilled life only a river can bring it for you and it was the river i started talking about it flows from the base of the altar it is the river jesus too was telling men that out of your belly something can flow it is one thing you drank just as only one river will feed eden but when it is coming out it says out of your belly rivers of living water there is a river whose stream was designed opposed by the technology of Zion to be what is responsible for gladness of the city of God. My city, through prosperity, shall yet be spread abroad. How will prosperity come? There is a river that can expose gold. Everything was tied to that river. Your greatest advantage is inside you, not outside. It is what happens inside you that coordinates what your outside responds to. There is a river. There is a river. Have you ignored the river and you are busy running from pillar to post? Busy jumping from one aptitude test to another. One entrance, one relationship. You want happiness in marriage? Your solution is a river. You will find a river that brings the wisdom, that brings everything that your marriage needs. It is one river that branches into different heads. They say there is a river that the stream that that river can branch into can make glad the city of God. Are you in need of gladness? Do you want to end your life happily? What you need is a river. And it is that river Satan will not let to break out from you. It's one river. One. Fast! No! How can you fast? And these are the things that cracks the cucumber of the flesh. It is like a dam that is overflowed. It is too deep. The water there is too much. But the dam needs to break so that the water can flow. And he says, who is it that tests? 
Jesus cried out on the last day of the feast of tabernacles who is it that test let him come come why because out of your belly shall flow rivers out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water out of my belly, out of my belly, shall flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, out of my belly, hey. out of my belly, shall flow rivers. Take one minute and pray passionately. River flow. Listen, 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 listen. Listen me. Listen. Listen, please. I need your attention. You don't have a name yet. That thing your parents call you is not your name. It's a river that can give you a name. There is a river that is called River Effa in the realm of the spirit. Angels know it. Anytime I begin to speak, the river begins to flow out. It is that river that contains the ordinations of my life. Your name carries a river too. Tonight you are asking, River, flow. Can you lift up your voice and declare, Out of my belly, River, break out. Break out. Break out. Out of my belly. Out of my belly. Shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of my belly. Out hey. of my belly. Shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. It's a river that can bring to life anything that is dead. Anything dead, if the river touches it, it comes to life. But can you let the river flow tonight? If principalities and warlocks in the spirit are still questioning your identity who are you they are waiting for a river river flow river flow river flow There's a river in my inside that is able to drown the world. There's a river in my inside that is able to drown the world. I can drown the world. There's a river in my inside that is able to drown the world. There's a river inside of me that is able to drown the world. I can change the world. I can change the world. There's a river in my inside that is able to change the world. When the enemy will come against you like a sudden flood, you too, there is a river inside you. It's 
a class of floods. There is a river boiling inside you. Ushers, go around and help people. I see the power of God breaking out. Breaking out boundaries. I see new graces. Prophetic insights. I see healing graces. I see revelatory power. Revelatory power. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Touch. 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 You are not permitted to enter this meeting and live without becoming a river. You are not permitted to live without becoming a river. Worship ministers, hear my voice. Your voice can become a river drowning nations. Your voice can become a river It's not about lyrics again. It's about where your voice carries men to. It's about what your voice does to the souls of men. It's about governments. It's about thrones. It's about powers. It's about executives. Spirit lead me when my trust is with our borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call take me deeper see a terrible sight in the spirit lend me your attention please if you can lend me your attention I see a terrible sight in the spirit I see darkness thick darkness and I see light inside it and I see lightning thunders I see brightness and thunders inside the darkness and I discern that it is Elohim that sits inside it and I heard the voice come come certain people are about to chat dimensions that they have never read about never seen maybe into the hearts of men your feet is about to chat it now and it is a horn of ordination it is a call for ministry come come it's calling you into the lightning calling you into the thunder only your voice will hear the secret contemplations of the thunder that will become the hidden thing of your ministry an instruction will come for you to seal it. Never disclose it, the things you have heard. The utterance of the seven thunders. Come. Come. He says, come. Step into these deep waters. 
I know it's full of fear, but come, 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 come. I know you are doubting yourself. You are doubting whether God can use you. All of the question mark. Come. He says, step in. Who are those that will do business in deep waters? Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Your hand is strong upon them. Thank you, Jesus. Your hand is strong upon them. For want of time, we are going to have to tie it up here. Next week, we will continue. I have not even introduced my teaching yet. Please, let's come early next week so we can make proper um, progress as touching the matters. Everybody sick in one area of your body or another. Let me show you how the river works. It's a river that is inside you that will restore you. Sick in any... You have seen what God does in this place. You have seen the lame walk. You have seen the baby restored. You have seen God those mighty things. Deafness has been checked out. All kinds of cases has been dealt with. But now you are going to believe God for yourself. Wherever you are. Just place your hand on any part of your body. Any body that is desirous of the touch of God. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. I would call cases and I will call one, two, and three. All I need you to do is shout that name that there is power. Let me explain what will happen as you call the name of Jesus. They will withdraw from the account of the stripe of Jesus. All the stripe that they gave him. As you are calling that name, they will associate your sickness to the stripe of Jesus. And because of they have striped him, by his stripe, you will be healed. That is what will happen. So it will not be by one strange thing. It will be by stripes that you will be healed. And so if you shout that name, they will rewind time and project very, 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 very wide to the spirit of infirmity they will show Jesus being flogged so when the spirit sees it his anger will be tamed by the justice that has been served that one person was bruised and flogged if you will still be sick after Jesus paid the price then you are very proud it means you did not accept and embrace his sacrifice if you continue to take your sickness it's because you owned it you did not accept that Jesus is the one that owns that sickness now because they have flogged him now lay your hands on wherever you want your touch and behold the power of King Jesus. And so Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, the risen one, I command spirits of infirmity. I command organ failures. I command blood-related diseases, HIV. I command hepatitis. I command pains and ache, heart conditions, deafness, eye conditions I command throat related diseases abdominal pains and pains around the back pains in the lumbar vertebrae I command pains around the thoracic region 
I command pains in the head, unending migraines, migraines, pains in the head that never cease. I command waist pains. I command all kinds of body weaknesses. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three. Behold the power of God. I command spirits of infirmity that continue to replicate sicknesses of different shades. You are always on drugs. I command the spirits at the count of three, lift their bodies. One, two, three, out, out, out. Please help them, help them. Out in the name of Jesus. There are many of us you suddenly has found that you can do what you could not do you are checking now the pain is not here again you are thinking it will take long but see what king jesus has done it's about throne it's about government it's about truth and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free that abdominal pain sharp abdominal pain that has been with you for a long time it has even entered years. It has left you. Check it. Asthma. Congestions in your breath. Difficulty to breathe well. By the name of Jesus, I command that devil. Leave their body now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yokes of delay. Ushers, please go around. Go around quickly. Yokes of delay that masquerade themselves in any pattern, any way whether seeing yourself with primary school uniform or in any kind of dimension at the count of three i destroy the yokes of delay from your life one in the name of jesus two in the name of jesus three in the name of jesus right now right now delay be broken be broken near success syndromes you always come near the palace but never enter you will show other people the way everybody will enter except you i'm declaring now by the power in the name of jesus i cancel that narrative from your life from today henceforth in the name of jesus christ please with a very thunderous amen i need you to respond to what i'm about to challenge now everybody standing for one loved one one family member or another one person in the lineage or another as you stand for them with a loud amen the foundations responsible for their afflictions for their challenges it shakes and it cracks right now in the name of jesus christ Barrenness, barrenness. You have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I have seen Jesus do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. I declare over your life and over your loved ones. I command that womb be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. People that are being tormented by lying spirits lying spirit telling them what is not truth telling them what God has not said are you sure you are not sick are you sure you should not go and do tests always conscious of diseases never conscious of your health in Christ and you are suffering by time because of the burden of that disposition that was altered by a spirit I declare upon everybody here now those who are afflicted by that spirit i know you can hear me i command that spirit hear my voice right now lose them let them go in the name of jesus christ out in the name of jesus out be gone tormented by fear i command fear lose lose them right now and be gone from their life in the name of jesus christ Let me 
we speak a word of blessing over somebody now? Listen. One week is too long a time for your life to change forever. I declare in the next seven days by the hand of the Lord and the authority of his word I declare the doors of expectation you have been knocking on that has not opened I command that door a father be opened can you receive it I command doors I command doors to seasons doors to jobs doors to admissions doors to breakthroughs I command doors a father be opened very quickly very quickly check yourself where, wherever you are check yourself inspect what Satan thought he put in your body before you came here check it don't listen listen please check it don't take for granted what we do here and don't take for granted the visitation of the hand of the Lord check it if you have recognized or registered the touch of God upon your life raise your hand above your head wherever you are just make sure it's, it's really above your head my goodness my goodness see seeking Jesus seeking Jesus we will not be able to take testimonies because I was told last week that we, we closed quite late and it cost you know some challenges for some people so I declare over everybody who have received one touch or another I declare that everything you have received of the Lord is perfected in the name of Jesus Christ there is somebody here you are going to receive times two of what you lost last week something left you last week and you are in pain for it times two is what God brings for you this week